Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are going to talk about bridging the workforce gap uh, and talking about inclusivity in the workforce development in the geospatial sector today. Uh, I have a, an esteemed panel uh, representing both the industry and the academia because it is important when we talk about uh, bridging the gap, we have to get both the perspectives, uh, the academic side of it and also what the industry has to say. Um, I will uh, let the panel introduce uh, themselves one by one. We start with you, Eva. Hello, everyone. I'm Eva Carranza, and I'm heading the sustainability and ESG topics for Hexagon, a technology company. Hello, everyone. My name is Elsham Musayev. I am managing director of EKM Global Consulting Gamebaker. Hi, my name is Dr. Britta Ricker. I'm an assistant professor at Utrecht University in uh, the Copernicus Institute for Sustainable Development, uh, where I teach a lot of GIS, environmental impact assessment, and uh, content related to the sustainable development goals. I'm also an active member of the International Cartographic Association, where I lead a commission on sustainable development and cartography. I'm also active in some UN working groups, uh, again, associated with the SDGs. Thank you. Got to learn how to use it, I guess. Okay. Hello. Okay. I'm Ted Nack, president of Topodot. Um, we're a company located in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we do point cloud processing. Uh, been in LIDAR for years, 30 years. Uh, this is the second company we started, and uh, and we've been doing Topodot's been around for 12 years. So we work with uh, mostly mobile LIDAR, doing um, basically transportation infrastructure processing, digital twins. So I represent the, uh, I guess the, the, the smaller user, the smaller uh, you know company and uh, part of this. So now we go. Back yeah. To share. Thank you, thank you, Ted. Uh, I would begin with uh, asking Eva the question about you know, you have been leading the sustainability efforts at Hexagon for a while now, and how has inclusivity in the workforce development contributed to your sustainability uh, goals and? Um, what is the broader impact on the organization? What is your perspective on that? So actually, the aspect of diversity, equity, and inclusion is highly linked to people in all aspects. Huh? And for a business to be successful, the biggest things that you need to think of, it's always people. How to keep people motivated, how to keep the right talent at the right place, and how to ensure that you can also offer those opportunities for the talent to keep further developing themselves. And in this case, sustainability focusing on inclusivity plays a key role because in many cases you can use sustainability as well as a motivation factor for the teams to get attracted to working on having a better business, yes, but also to having something that is long-lasting as well for people, for the planet, for the communities where they are or staying most of their lives. And when you are being very inclusive, you are able to focus then also on those talents that everyone has that are maybe going a little bit further from their normal job descriptions. And that empowers them to try to think out of the box, to try to bring new topics to the business. And when you're able to give them that kind of trust environment and make sure that they feel fully inclusive, included, and feel, make sure that you kind of have an equitable environment, everyone then can feel comfortable at bringing these topics up, challenging whatever is working. And that's the only way to become more sustainable. Because, I mean, we have seen the way that it has been working. It's if you continue on the business as usual, it will not be over the long term possible. Thank you, Eva. Uh, uh, Elsan, moving on to you. Eva touched up about you know, the, the relationship or the interconnection between sustainability and inclusivity. Uh, what is your take on, uh, say, inclusive hiring, particularly in case of uh, smaller companies uh, which don't have such large resources at uh, their disposal? What do you think about that? Thank you so much for this question. And this is sphere, it's long year, just as, just as a specific, and only it's professional involving for this sphere. My first meeting with Leica GS system, 
about the one small scanner. And when I'm giving you some question and person giving to me answer, like engineer, he's saying that I'm engineer for 20 years experience. And all our team is also engineers and also marketing team also the same. But for today, for smart solutions for the city, for the people, we are needed this data. We are needed these services and also this product. In this case, we are needed to thinking about how we can bring it the another category of the people, maybe young generation, maybe, pe maybe people from another sphere to using this technology and understanding this technology. For this, we are needed to use professional development and also for now very good solutions for AI and machine learning for much easy for using this type of the technology. In this case, I am thinking for now we are needed to thinking about the HR for involving to the different people coming for this sphere. Maybe some people with disability. He's sitting at home and he can distantly helping for this business. And if he's understanding the IT and maybe little bit GIS. I am thinking we have good potential and big companies needed to thinking about the professional development system. Thank you, Alsan. Also, I remember uh, we were having this conversation this morning about uh, what does inclusivity mean in this case. So uh, we, we talked about, uh, when we talk about inclusivity, first we need to talk about the diversity there. And it also came uh, in our discussions that, uh, of course, the, the, you know, the main uh, diversity uh, we talk about gender, we talk about race, we talk about socioeconomic uh, diversity and other things. But we were also talking about knowledge diversity and bridging the gap. Maybe this is also something we need to look at. We, we uh, keep on talking about, uh, you know, there is a gap. Uh, there is not much we get as a talent. The industry keeps saying it. But are we looking enough in all regions uh, or are we restricting ourselves there? Uh, having said that, coming to the academic uh, expert <laughs> yeah. here, yeah. Uh, what is your take on this? What, what, how can uh, students be more prepared or what, what should be exactly. done? Well, yeah. I, what comes to mind is, as an academic, I have to introduce new terminology. And I think what you're talking about is uh, epistemology, so our ways of knowing. So I was trained as a geographer. My epistemology is geographer. But here we have surveyors and we have people who are computer scientists. So we have lots of different actors from different uh, epistemologies. And I think that's one, uh, one point that we can really bring different people to the table to have these really in interesting interdisciplinary conversations to address some of these, world, these problems facing our world. And uh, associated with that is this positionality. And we use the term positionality in academia to position ourselves in relation to the, to the research at hand because your positionality informs the types of questions that you ask. It informs how you might use your technology or your, your software. And so I think these are two important terms from academia that are really useful in the workplace and the work context. Um, so bringing in people with different positionalities and different epistemologies uh, could really open up an opportunity for discussion about new solutions that maybe we haven't thought of before. Yeah, Something, of course. Yeah, yeah. For <clears throat> my experience in project in Azerbaijan, and for now, we have problem between the real economy and this is sphere. And people who are working in the real economy, sometimes it's not understanding. And people just thinking about, the, for example, aerial capturing. And, but you needed to have the good IT system. You are needed to have server. You are needed to have the good software. Looks like it's Topodot about the future extraction. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you software, oh, is, but when you are talking about the future extraction, when you are talking about the training the people who are needed to do this, mm -hmm. for just you having the good aerial sensor, for example, airborne sensor, city mapper from Hexagon, this is not that enough. This is just a I, few I, million I, for investment, but I you needed the more speed. investing. Government, different country needed to understanding this. This is its most important. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Testing, of testing, course, testing. we are having this discussion. Well, I, I, for some reason, I'm the d touch of death to the mic. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it was interesting. So I got to listen. So uh, let me let me tell you. From I'm not in a big company. We, we but one of the things uh, I, I also told when we, when we first spoke with uh, 
Khalili, uh, Khalili that uh, I, I, we don't have a diversity program. When you're 25 people, you take who you, you, take who can help you, right? And, and, and that's really the, the key. Um, it's interesting. So I would say we're, we're in an expansion mode now where the interesting thing that, that, I've, that, we're, in, that we're trying to um, deal with in growing our company is that we actually want, <laughs> we actually are trying to um, somewhat diminish our diversity. So this, this, this constant, so what happens is you get these youngsters and they learn a lot in school and one of the worst things they do is they actually think they know too more than they do. And they come in and they have all these ideas, okay? And then we say, you know what? I really like you just to come to work on time. And by the way, if you just come in on time and don't make your own schedule, because this is a little annoying. And second of all, you don't know everything you know. You know enough coming from, from university, you are ready to start learning. And have a little humility and listen to people that have been here in 10 years. Do it the way we say until you understand why we do it this way. And then start offering your own answers, start offering your own suggestions. And we'll listen to anything, but we have the, one of the biggest problems I have is that young, our young workers, even in their 20s or 30s, every shiny object they see is the next solution. But they lack some of the, some of the real commitment to work really hard to make one of them work. I get 10% of the first solution, and 90% they lose interest after a while, and they find the next shiny object to look at. So I think it's those kind of things. I think diversity is, diversity in, for me, race, gender, I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you do. The things that I want not diverse is your approach to your passion for the technology, your approach to your ethics, your integrity, your willingness to listen. And that's a culture that I, I don't want much very diverse. Those are traits that I want to be the same, regardless who you are or where you come from. So it's kind of interesting, and, that, and that's where, it's the one thing we struggle with too, and it's been a, an awakening for, our, for our, our, uh, our company that, okay, we need more processes, we need more structure, and you need to be accountable for meeting certain objectives, because as you grow, you can't, you can't be too diverse with everybody doing what they want to do. Which is uh, so it's a, so it's a little it's a little base of a compromise there. Yeah. So I really like what you mentioned first about uh, not having a diversity program, huh? I think if you are very very good and really living up to the expectations and really being an inclusive culture, you don't need a diversity program, huh? And I am fully agreeing with you as well. With sometimes. And I don't want to use the word arrogance, but sometimes it almost clings on the arrogance sometimes with some generations on both sides, huh? On the very young generations, on the a little bit older and more mature generations. And I think that's actually part of that culture that you're talking about. So the best would be, let's set up the right culture about what is it that we're expecting our business to go? How is it that we are expecting to work between us, but with the customers and within the overall chain that we, that we have on us? And then let's agree on that. And then let's challenge each other to improve it. I agree. I agree very much. Go ahead. We are not needed to miss about the basic things. People needed the money for the daily life. In this case, we needed to have some motivation program for the any generation. It's young generation or not. And it's only a small part of the people ready to work was free of charge. In this case, if it's you cannot motivate the people, he cannot do this. Well, you make a good point. And, and, and the thing is, and I don't want to make a sense that this is the way it, this is the way it should be. It is important to know to, to actually create a culture where your, your contribution counts. So you actually, and you have to identify, and they have to understand um, when you're working with, you know, you're mentoring, you know, younger, younger, especially younger workers that, why this is important, what you're doing. And it may not seem as, because they have dreams of actually coming from university. They'll have dreams of doing great things, and you know, and sometimes you just have to put your feet on the ground and say, well, learn this first. Uh, you know, I, I came from a time when my first job was at General Electric uh, doing satellite control systems. I chased 3,000 
3,000 person building, I chased people around and I followed them. And if I lost them, if I went to the restroom and, and they, they left, I couldn't find them for three hours. That was my day for the first three months of my job, just finding people. But, but it taught me a lot of humility. It taught me, okay, I have to be on time. I have to, call, I have to be quicker. I have to, no one's waiting for me. That's not the worst thing in the world. I think that's, these are things that count also. So it's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of a, 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 a bit of a compromise there between. I, I would continue asking Ted, uh, what do you think? I mean, what role does academia play in something like this, you know, preparing uh, people, uh, the, the students who are, the young graduates who are actually moving into, particularly uh, you, you head a company which is very technology driven and you have a young workforce. What do you think the role of the academia should be here? Are, are, is the academia supposed to prepare them already or, yeah? You know, <laughs> to prepare, I, I, think, I think a lot of it, it's the... <laughs> I've had I've I've seen a change even from my from I'm, well I'm not young anymore but um, <laughs> there, there's a flexibility and a lifestyle that that it's okay you know we understand and so we've so we've reached a point where I mean my you know I, I sign off on everything if someone has a problem that's okay you know and then they need a day off or whatever but it's really fascinating how I've interviewed many students who are very bright. And who basically, it was a fight to say, no, you have to, you have to come into work when we do. I said, no, I'll work later. I said, well, no, but we're not here. And if we're not here, we can't help you because you really don't know what you're doing. And so if you don't know what you're doing, because there is some value to mentorship. So I think what the universities could do in actually exchanging with people like ourselves, and I've actually had somewhat negative experience with in, in Florida where I, I work with some universities that the professors weren't engaged and the students were great. We hired many of them. But the professors were, okay, yeah, show them this. No, that's not what we do. Point clouds, that's new. You think they'd be interested? They were like, no, I, 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 I'm tenured. It's okay. <laughs> I don't care. And that's not everybody. Please don't take it personally. <laughs> no. but, but, it, but it's like that. And, they, and, they, and they, it's, it's become a business in some sense in the real... The real, um, the real passion for teaching and the real passion for learning. I think some of the sometimes your professors have lost. They, yeah. It's very it's and, and and it becomes that arrogance that actually isn't diverse. So you know so so. I understand you. You have to look at yourself and and, and really say okay, they like that diversity because they, they they don't they like a diversity of of, of interest in, in what's new because. It doesn't kind of fit into their model. So I, I've run into that. But I think also if you, um, if there could be more interchange where even some uh, technical um, internship where they, they come and actually have to work and understand and understand what they don't know, because the technical side is one thing, but the practical side can be very helpful. So maybe that's, that's where it can help. Yeah, I would uh, let Britta take it from there. <laughs> Yes, thank you for that feedback. That is really useful. Um, is this, now is this one off? Oh, oh here. Okay, yeah. here I am. I got to talk. Yeah, I, you know, so I guess I'm the opposite of that professor because I was just in the other room, you know, flying, flying the drones yeah, and playing yeah, with all the robots, and yeah. I have a whole thing full of pamphlets that I'm going to follow up on because I am really interested in how the technology is changing. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We've returned to the lounge. Um, yeah, so I was just saying I'm the opposite of those professors. I get so excited about the technology, and I've been trying out all of these new robots, and um, I'm, I'm really excited by all of it. So I think one thing you could communicate to the the university better is what skills, like, yeah, what technical skills should we be teaching this next generation of uh, of of geographers, of uh, people who want to go into this industry. And my first, ex my first job was with the Federal Emergency Management Agency and it really closely matches what you were saying. I learned just enough GIS, but none of the customized tools that they had built in-house to use. So I was starting from the ground, ground up. So, um, but but I, I do think there is a great opportunity to have this open line of communication between uh, in industry. And one, one challenge we have is like making lab assignments, making lab assignments 
assignment. So that would be a gift you could give to one of these tenured professors, or you could put it online uh, to to show the world what's possible with your products, with your technology, with your uh, with your business, and also give give potential. Uh, uh, employees a, a taste of what you're of what you're doing I don't know well I think I think I agree I tell you it's a bit of a challenge because I have the passion too and I'm still even I'm, I'm an old man but I have the passion and I still you know I, I love new stuff and I can't stop it but um, but I think I think some of the challenges that we have as a company who want, I really wanted to contribute is that it's difficult in a university environment to step in, first of all, when especially a small company, we don't have the resources to say, oh, well, we'll give you this guy for a semester, you know, and, and let him, we all have to get our job done and it's difficult. And so it becomes a, I don't want to say a distraction, but it's something out of what, you know, what we do to make money. So it's, it's, a, little, it's a little hard, but we still do it. Um, it gets to be difficult that we only get them for uh, three months of a semester. So you don't learn much in three months in, in, in this kind of environment. So it's, the idea is, um, the idea is, I think, programs where I, I actually, I think that, like, there should be programs where you, they can take a year off and just come and work for us for a year. Just, just, just really to experience, I, I, you know, if they came into the office and said, okay, this person's going to be with you for a year, I'll spend time to teach them. They go out, they'll touch things. My son's out there, and since he was 16, he started using laser scanners. So, you know, he would come in, in, in just in the summer. Um, and, and that was really useful because sometimes, he, sometimes they're focused on the grade. They don't, they don't, they don't, they're just focused on the grade and getting through the next semester so they get the degree. There could be more flexibility in saying, well, you're, this is your junior year, but why don't you go and do this internship at this company and, and, and run the equipment and come back? Because they'll come back saying, this is what I want learn to learn. This is why I have to learn it. I got my second master's when, after I went to General Electric, and I studied all the things I didn't do well the first time. That is, I barely got by, I got a C. Next time I said, oh, I know why I have to use this. This makes sense to me now. I took courses and I aced them because, and I was, I t was teaching the professor things because I had worked for five years and said, oh, I know why you do it this way. That would be useful if something to look into. Can I say something? Okay. <clears throat> and I'm already had experience with a college counselor. I'm working with the school people and about the, it's choosing the right university and right faculty. And we are for now needed to thinking about the people. We needed to start with school and with parents, with the people. This is it's a new technology, a lot of people not understanding. Second problem about the curriculum and right assessment system. I am not sure university have in this sphere its right curriculum. And third, I believe the competency-based learning and project-based learning. If it's industry will come to the education, and in that time we will have right people and I am not sure people needed to be study five years or it's a four years in university just enough two years in competency-based learning and its company have it's a good person and this is it's my vision yeah so I would almost agree with that and I would say if it's competence-based and make it very flexible huh so that they can also combine university on that competence side and they get the academic knowledge, which is extremely valuable, but that they get the real life value out of, okay, how do you then in the workplace or together with the customers make it work? And then go back and then challenge whatever direction they want to keep on learning on. We have a course like that at Utrecht University in, a, in the Copernicus Institute for Sustainable Development called Transdisciplinary Case Study or Consultancy Project. And it's where the students come from dis different domains to work together on a common project, often from the housing sector or um, different, different companies can come with a challenge saying, hey, we don't have time to work on this, but we're really interested what your students can come up with in a, in a one period. Uh, course, but it is a really great opportunity for the students to really act as consultants and work together on a common project uh, similar to what you're talking about. So if you are interested in, uh, if you have a case study you'd like a group of students to work on, re reach out to me. 
And also good idea, company looks like it's hexagon, can start in startup accelerator together with some university. And this is good for hexagon about the, he will have the right people in different countries. Yeah. Yep. Which is one of the key aspects that we try to leverage on, huh? yeah. to get access also to the right diverse talent and to also give the opportunity for them to challenge us. You know? Yeah, uh, uh, I also teach at the university, and uh, my experience with this struggle is we we we, lit, we really struggle to get uh, students placed for their bachelor thesis internships, or their master's thesis uh, internships. So. I'm not sure industry probably wants it, but uh, when it's come to uh, when it comes to you know really taking them in to do those things, they want uh, completely trained uh, people to do it. They're like, oh, you are not ready yet to come explore or something like that. That's our experience of it. Maybe not globally, but uh, still. So, but is it more related to the fact that the maybe there is some privacy or data or Sometimes. confidentiality? Sometimes, issues? yes. Because many things, it's uh, of course you don't want the students to be working in your next development that it's coming yeah. out in the next three years only. Yeah. But there is quite a lot of it that has been around for more than two hundred yeah. years. And that it still can keep them up to date and give them more like that experience, which manage also expectations on the student side. Because I, I relate a lot to what you say. I have a lot of people in the team saying, I only come to the office if, I don't know, if I can bring my dog or my fish <laughs> or whatever. I mean, to be honest, it's, and I'm, I, I, I'm not against pets or anything, but <laughs> this is just one example. <laughs> and, and that they would feel offended if they don't feel like it and they, they don't want to work. And of course, there I see like it's an expectation management. Can you have everything you want in a super list? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, it, it, is, it is a problem. It's, um, we, I've, I've, I, 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 have, I won't go into it. You have those examples. I love it. The dog, the fish, um, you know, why can't I walk from home? Oh, I'm working very productively, but if I call you, it takes an hour and a half for you to, to get back to me. So what were you doing? Uh, so walking your dog or playing your fish. So, no, that's, that's a problem. Um, and, and I think it's, um, yeah, you know, uh, I think it can be a very long conversation. Um, I, I think... Uh, when I look for people now, I mean, we've had the opposite. So we've had the opposite experience. So let me tell the good experience. So we've, uh, we're a very progressive company. We're doing new things. And uh, we hired uh, uh, new students for that were actually asylum from, from uh, Venezuela or whatever. You know, they had to get out and then it's whatever. So, um, and they've done very well. And, um, and one young man decided, you know, he said he worked for us worked hard, anything. You just asked him to do something, he did it, right? And then he said, oh, I want to program. So he took a couple courses, then he went on YouTube and just taught himself programming like a beast. And he's just, so these are the things, you know, and, and these are the intangibles. Meanwhile, I, I hired a, a young lady once for, to website development, interviewed well, very smart, sharp. After two, three months, I said, you, 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 you don't understand the boss-employee relationship. If I ask you to come into work, you have to be. No, why? I, I'm not fulfilled. I go, well, you have to fulfill yourself in another job. This isn't going to work. So it's very strange, you know, the, 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 the range of, of, of attitude that you find. Yeah, sometimes um, and it's, it's not healthy. hard to draw the line it's, of it, it's how not, much it, is uh, It's yeah, not healthy, really. Yeah. You know, I think, I, think, um, I think maybe at the university level, some some more re reality, you know, just, just, some, just tell them, look, you're learning the fundamentals, really, the theory, the application, and there's people out there that will have 20 years experience that you have to grasp onto and learn from them. And that's the, okay, so we'll talk about just this working at home. The mentorship is a big problem. Every time you come in, you learn from the guys that have done it for 20 years that you don't have in textbooks that you just learn the practical side. And when you are working at home, you lose that. You can't have, and these guys that have this experience, I'm sorry, I resenting had to develop a, 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 um, 
whatever we call it, Zoom at the, at the time, we were COVID time, it's the Zoom meetings that I had to pull everybody together with to have a discussion. No, be next to me, follow me around. When I turn around, I say, what are you doing? That's not right, try this. You can't do that if you're not overlapping in the same time, and that means you can't accommodate your schedule all the time. The mentorship is a big problem because that's where you learn, and that's the first five years of your, six years of your, of your career is just absorbing all the information that's there. Yeah, so, totally agree. Mentorship is a big, or like a key aspect, and then sponsorship. And you only sponsor the people that you can trust. And trust will only be there after they have been able to prove, prove. that the expectations were met in any side. So I am happy to see that you have had like this equitable type of environment where you have allowed people to further develop in the sites where they are, no matter the background. And for me, that's kind of bringing the key aspect that you need to look at in all type of settings, huh? not only in companies. Okay, uh, since we don't have uh, so much time, uh, maybe we can uh, try, you know, wrapping up the session with uh, uh, Eva, if you could share, uh, you know, some uh, example of where inclusivity has actually uh, worked successfully for your sustainable goals or, yeah, do you have an example from uh, your team or something, yeah? So my work, it's very um, uh, broad, let's say, in terms of sustainability, right? And you have aspects that deal with everything from product design to customer satisfaction. Oh. So it can be anything and nothing at mm. the same time. And one of the key drivers for uh, Hexagon to be successful is the customer satisfaction part. And there, it's really about understanding the key pain points of the customer and being global as an organization, you only understand the pain point if you are very much focused on the customer. And that customer is very different if you are in one type of company or on one type of, let's say, municipality than if you are in the other one. And that's where, for me, diversity has the key driver on sustainability. And in this type of services, that's what makes products last longer. That's what makes the circularity aspects. And it's related for me as well into the overall business success. Mm -hmm. Elson, do you have uh, an anecdote or uh, an experience that you can share? Yes, yes, yeah. I have it for now. I have one project. And he's want to going from 2D for 3D. It's one of the key my offer about the starting the long-term professional development about the I'm planning to use the old generation with his experience in 2D and bring it together young generation, which one is ready to learning. Maybe we can use in this is two type of the people for having the good success for the end. But we cannot have result in the same time or the fast. In this case, I am offered to my customer thinking about the long term development. It's minimum 10 years. Yes, Britta. Yeah, I guess most of my examples are from the classroom. And uh, what I like to show my students is just what's possible with geospatial technology to kind of challenge them a bit to think about what's out, to think outside the box. Because um, it's not always obvious the solutions we can come up with using traditional GIS or geospatial technology. Um, we also have a program at the University of Utrecht called Inclusion. And, and it's for uh, refugee students to take classes um, while they might not be able to work, they don't have work permits, or they might not be able to, they don't have the funding to enroll in, in, in the university, but um, it's just wonderful to have their perspective in the classroom, and they ask questions uh, that are different than students from the Netherlands or from, from, uh, from North America, and it really adds a rich discussion, and some of the projects that they pick for their lab assignments to use the open data to map the communities where they come from, it's just really inspiring. Um, and so yeah, I just wanted to share that. Yeah, I think uh, well, we, we have some, some good topics here, and I actually, it's, it's, I've actually enjoyed this very much. So let me just say that. Um, and I think, um, I think, I think, what I'll put down is uh, what, I, what I'll leave with is that the intangibles are the most important. You know, be curious, ask questions, and your point is well taken. Um, 
we've had, I have a diverse background. Again, we have people from in Florida. You get a lot of just people from everywhere and, and anywhere. It's, it's no problem. And, and it's great. And they do. And some, um, you can see they are sometimes much more motivated because they've actually seen some worse places in the world. You know, and, that's, and I, I, have, um, I have sometimes from my, from my own country there, you know, they're just a little bit too, oh, they're just too, a little too soft. So, uh, um, but, but that's okay. But it's the intangibles, I think. It's the cur be curious, be res and, and then the respectful, be respect those that have been here, that have been through it, because, you know, um, and, and, and that's actually missing a little bit. I think you come in and, you, and, and they've, you know, uh, I, I, think, I think they have, some of them learn that, and after a couple of years, they go, oh my gosh, you were right. It's like your kids, once in a while, you live for them saying, oh, you know what, you were right about that, Dad. <laughs> and you, you live for that. It can take a long time, you know. Um, but uh, you know, it's you know, you go through the cycle. You're 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 God, and then they're little, and then in this middle age, you're teenager. You know nothing, and then in their twenties, they say, "Oh well, maybe you were right," you know. So, so it kind of goes with that with employees too. You know, it's not bad. Um, but I think, um, but I think, and then to be honest, I, and I'll just say, I'm, I'm oblivious to race, color. I don't care. I, I won't make it ever a criteria. I, I think that's actually racist to think about. I just don't. So it is what it is, and I think it works best, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, please. I I understand your perspective, and I think that's really close, really important. But I I do also think it's important to recognize that different people have different experiences, and and based on their bodies, and so we can't uh, ignore that. Uh, yes, Britta, uh, do, you, do you have an example of where you have had a, uh, you know, inclusive collaboration between academia and industry uh, that you've seen as a good example? Anything that you can um, think of? My collaborations right now are more tightly coupled with local governments. And so understanding their uh, specific challenges and coming up with workflows together to address, uh, address their uh, data needs as they relate to reporting on the sustainable development indicators and how they can be localized to monitor environments that they're most interested in. Yeah. Uh, is, is Hexagon involved with uh, any industry, you know, mentorship programs or, uh, yeah? Yes, so we do have a couple of uh, in different levels. Huh? So it can be industry specific and then we have partnerships with some uh, associations that are researching a specific topic, quite, those are quite connected to the business needs. And then what we have as well is that for certain communities where we operate, we also have partnerships more with universities or with the local setups. And then it's more about creating that equity in terms of access to what is out there, more into trying to get people at the young age interested about all the different type of possibilities that technology brings them. Thank you. I think uh, you know we have touched upon uh, some uh, some points which are important to discuss, and uh, maybe we can continue the discussion another time as well. But uh, we we talked about the mentorship aspect, and then I really liked what you said. You know, the trust. You need to build the trust, and then comes the sponsorship. And uh, Ted, you uh, talked about you learn from the people who have been there, uh, done that. And uh, we, we, we take that as academic, uh, you know, we re represent the academia also. So we take that uh, here. Uh, and uh, we, we, we have to keep on talking about it. That's also important because uh, even if you say that you don't care, but sometimes it is important to care because if you are not caring, then you are uh, ignoring maybe. <laughs> Am I ignoring? You know, <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. I said, look, for me, it's just, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, mean, I, I just really, if someone has the passion, the curiosity, beyond even the technical ability, and, 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 and to be honest, you know, um, no, I won't, it's too many anecdotal stories. So let's just leave it at that. I say, I really, the content of your character kind of guy, I just don't care where you came from, and then they're very diverse. I mean, the, I think it's my business, but like, like there's, I, have, I have several very talented women working for me. I have to remind them at times because 
and my wife now. So everybody's telling me that what I'm doing wrong, and it's it's their, like their dream job, you know. But it's okay. <laughs> but I accept that, you know. Everybody has something to contribute, and everybody has a different experience. I get that, but I think. I just think it comes from your character and who you are because it hasn't, I haven't seen it, you know, culture, I mean, outside of culture, but it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. It just, you know, everyone has something to, experience, to, to contribute. I really believe that. Yeah. What they look like, it doesn't matter. I just can't do it. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we've had an interesting discussion. Uh, we are going to continue into the uh, DEI awards. Uh, yeah, so I would uh, let Eva be on the stage, continue to be on the stage, uh, because you also represent the DEI committee there. Uh, thank you, the panel. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you again to all of our panelists. It was a great, great conversation around workforce and diversity. I think seeing diversity as a possible solution to closing, not the only solution, but a solution to closing the workforce gap becomes important because uh, when you start breaking the math down on the workforce gap in geospatial and earth observation, it's going to take many, many solutions to even have a, a chance at closing that gap, to be honest with you. The numbers are, are staggering. Even today, we see that on average there's about 40, 41,000 job openings in geospatial each and every day. That number will probably be over 80,000 job openings each and every day by 2030. Where do those people come from? If they're not going to come from higher ed, if they're not going to come from other training programs, how do they magically appear? And the answer is, quite frankly, they don't. And so it's going to take all of us and then some to be able to have a chance to, to, to build a solution around that. As Kuhaley mentioned, it's my pleasure now to transition into our annual DEI Trailblazer Awards presented on behalf of WGIC. WGIC uh, honors the, the hard work and dedication on several different fronts. And the, our first award tonight will be to uh, an individual who's made outstanding contributions. The winners of the 24 DEI Trailblazer Awards this recognition honors individuals and organizations that have demonstrated not only exceptional leadership and commitment to advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion within the geospatial, global geospatial industry, but also have been selected through a rigorous selection process of the DEI committee within WGIC. Uh, we are excited and to highlight the groundbreaking work of this year's honorees. The Individual Champion Award is our first award, and this is awarded to Albert Momo founder of GeoDev International. Albert is the founder of GeoDev International and former chair of the Trimble Foundation. He's been awarded the individual award for his exceptional dedication to DEI principles throughout his career. Uh, yeah. From the onset of his tenure as the chair of the Trimble Foundation, Momo made DEI one of the foundation's three core pillars, overseeing the donation of millions of dollars annually to organizations worldwide that promote diversity. His leadership was instrumental in establishing the Dr. Gladys West Scholarship Program, which supports underrepresented students in STEM fields at Virginia State University, North Carolina, A&T State University, and Florida International University. This program was not only honors the legacy of Dr. Gladys West, but also aligns with the Trimble Foundation goals of empowering women and fostering diversity in the geospatial community. In addition to his work at the Trimble Foundation, Momo served as the first chair of the WGIC DEI committee. In this role, he was pivotal in shaping the organization's DEI strategy, spearheading initiatives, and leading discussions on diversity at major industry events around the globe as well as the United Nations and World Geospatial Information Congress. His tireless advocacy for inclusive policies and practices has left a lasting impact on both the Trimble Foundation and the broader geospatial community, making him truly a deserving recipient of this award. Thank you, Albert. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to do a picture? Our second award this evening goes uh, for corporate impact, and that goes to Deep Spatial, Inc. 
Deep Spatial Inc. has been recognized with the Corporate Impact Award for its innovative use of GeoAI to advance educational equity in India. Their platform has transformed the educational landscape in India, uh, providing personalized learning experiences to over half a million students. The platform's deployment under the VSK initiative marks an, a significant achievement in India's national education policy, emphasizing real-time monitoring, student-teacher performance analytics, and enhanced educational outcomes. Deep Spatial's commitment to leveraging AI for educational enhancement as evidenced by the successful launch and expansion plans across India exemplifies their leadership in driving DEI through technology. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And last but certainly not least is the Advocacy Award. This year's Advocacy Award goes to Women Plus and Geospatial. The Advocacy Award has been introduced in this year to honor groups making significant strides in DEI advocacy. The inaugural recipient, Women Plus and Geospatial, has built a global network that supports over 5,500 women and non-binary professionals in the geospatial sector. This award-winning organization founded in just 2019 is dedicated to fostering gender, gender equality and diversity in the industry by offering mentorship programs, networking opportunities, and career development initiatives. Women Plus and Geospatial empowers its members to thrive and become advocates for greater inclusivity in the geospatial community. Their mission to create an inclusive global community where all genders can thrive is central to their vision of a more diverse geospatial industry. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm going to say a few words regarding women in geospatial. It's um, a, an award-winning global network of women in other observation and geospatial fields. It was started back in 2019 as a grassroots project, but has since grown to over 5,500 uh, people across across 149 countries, which is really good. And I'm delighted that we have won this award, advocacy being the first advocacy award. And um, our mission is to inspire, unite, and empower women, in all women in this sector, to be able to become leaders and change makers in this field. And we do this through various activities like community building, thought leadership, career development, events. And we actually have a, str a very strong mentorship program which is highly successful and that's how we get to mentor uh, many women in this sector. Thank you so much for the award. We are very much delighted to receive this. Thank you. And if we could get Albert and get Deep Spatial back, stay, stay up here. We're gonna do a group picture. Thank you again and congratulations to all of our recipients.